Hello to all the viewers and learners of NIOS. I, Dr. Piyush Prashad, Academic Officer in Accountancy, welcome you in our video program. Learners, as in our earlier programs, we have discussed on the topic cost accounting and I have told you that this cost accounting is going to have four chapters in your book. We have already discussed about the first chapter which includes the meaning of cost accounting, what is the scope, limitations, how do we able to differentiate the cost accounting from financial accounting. Now the second chapter according to your book of module of cost accounting is basic cost concept. This chapter is going to involve the number of things which basically involve the meaning of cost, what are the major elements of cost, how can we classify the cost from the overheads, how the elements of overheads are going to be classified into different categories and so on. For this very purpose, we have invited in our studio Dr. Anand Sharma, who is an associate professor from Central University, Haryana. Sir, I welcome you in our studio. Thank you. Learners, once you are able to know the meaning of cost accounting and once you are able to differentiate the cost accounting with the financial accounting, now it's the time for you to have some much more elaborate vision. Simply understanding the meaning of cost accounting is not going to help you in analyzing the cost of the products. You should be very clear about the term overheads. How the direct expenses are going to be differentiated from the indirect expenses. And how can we classify the overheads into the various categories. So we are just going to start up with the thing exactly with the meaning of the term cost. Sir, please explain our learner what is exactly the meaning of the term cost. We have talked a lot about cost accounting, but we are not able to focus on the term specifically the cost. The term cost as we use in our daily life is very important. Cost is aggregate of all expenses incurred to acquire something. For example, you go to market and buy a particular product. So, the amount you pay to the shopkeeper is the cost of that particular product to you. Sometime you produce the, some product. In that case, all expenses from raw material to labor to all miscellaneous expenses, the aggregation of all these expenses is cost. So, this way we can say the cost is amount of expenditure incurred actual or notional. It may be actual, it may be notional to attribute a particular product, process or service. When you have used the word notional or something like that, can you classif clarify it what is exactly do we mean by that term? Yeah. Actually, when you pay some cost from that is that becomes your cash expenditure, then sometimes we understand that this is cost. But there are some expenses which you do not pay at particular point of time, but you have paid earlier. For example, if you are doing a business in your own house. In that case, you calculate cost of different uh, you know raw material, you calculate cost of you know salary paid, wages paid to employee, but you do not consider the rent of that particular house because you consider that this is my own house. No. So that it's is going to be the self-acquired house yeah. or the self-employed capital yeah. or the person who is working in a business of his own. If you think from that point of view, if I am not going to work in my own business and I have devoted my time somewhere else, yeah. I am working on a salary as an employee to someone else, yeah. I may be able to get this much. Yeah. These costs are normally not taken into consideration yeah. by a businessman. Yeah. Normally, they take only those things which they pay actually from their own pocket. If they have taken a loan and they pay interest on it, they will think, fine, this is the thing. But yeah. what about the amount of that interest which you have invested of their own in the business? Yeah. In case, if that amount of capital was not invested by them, but they have invested that money in a bank or has deposited somewhere else, they are getting an interest which they are not yeah. getting by investing that money. Yeah. So, all these things are going to be taken under the category of the cost. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. What are the major elements of the cost? Once the meaning is clear, we are able to identify then there yeah. are some elements. Can yeah. you explain those elements in detail? 
you take any product, process or service, basically we understand that there are three elements, the three major elements of any product. So, these elements are any product you see it is made of some substance, some material or maybe you know number of materials you have used. So, first element of cost is material, then if material is there you cannot do anything until unless there is a labor who produce it, who you know makes the things happen. So, there is labor, there is a human you know effort involved. Then other than material and labor there are some expenses. So, basically we divide the cost in three categories material, labor and expenses. Okay. Can you explain all these three elements of cost which you have quoted right now as a yeah. material, labor and expenses in much more detail so that our learners may be able to get it a better view. Yeah. You take any product for example, you take car. You see in car lot of material is involved, you see some you know metal is involved, the body of the car is made of metal, some plastic paint is there, you see some seat cover is there, you see you know the steering is there, you see some wheel are there, you see some glasses are there. So, basically any product you think of a car, you think of a you know shirt, it is made of cloth, it is made of you know some thread is there you know some buttons are there. So, you take any material some uh, you take any product some material is there. So, it is very much necessary to analyze yeah. the cost of the material that is going to be involved in yeah. the material product. is the first you know important aspect of any you know product. And this thing is going to vary from product to product. Product to product. In some of the cases like you have quoted an example of a shirt yeah. where the cost of the cloth is going to be more in comparison to the cost of the thread or the buttons which we are yeah. going to use. Yeah. But in some other cases the things may be quite different. In a case of a, if we take a ring which is made up of diamond, yeah. the cost of the gold may be less in comparison to the cost of the diamond which is going to be there in that ring. Yeah. So, this is going to be different, but yeah. material is one of the very important factor which is to be taken into consideration at the time of deciding the cost. Yeah. Yes. Then so the second thing which you have quoted is the labor. Can you explain this labor? Yeah. Labor is the human effort which is involved to produce anything. And this human effort is involved at different stages. Basically from conception stage to designing to conceptualizing to you know actually producing it to actually you know supplying it in the customer's hand. So, from conceptualizing to the customer hand lot many human efforts are involved skilled labor, unskilled labor, manager, you know accountants so many persons are involved. So, the effort of all these persons are taken as labor. So, labor should not be understood that this is only wages of the you know workers. Those who are involved uh, yeah, directly in the production. Yeah, it, should, it is not a, you know blue collar uh, cost, it is cost of all human efforts involved. And there are some you know costs which are neither material nor labor. So, all these costs are covered under the heading expenses. Can you explain some example what all expenses you are definitely, talking of? Definitely let us take you know we took the case of car, we took the case of shirt, we took the case of laptop. So, you know anything which we can see on a laptop you know the screen the you know there are some buttons uh, all these you know components are there some batteries there. So, all these are material which you can see, touch, fine, feel. Fine, fine. Then some labor is involved in you know designing and you know actually producing it, you know supplying it. There are some expenses other than material and labor which are very, very important. For example, the factory where this uh, laptop is produced, in that particular factory you need some you know mobile, you need some computer you need some you know lighting. So, all these expenses over and above material and labor are taken as expenses. Fine. 
Once our learners are able to know this kind of thing, now it's the time to categorize the element of cost into the direct versus the indirect cost. So, how can we categorize our cost into two different categories as a direct and indirect cost? Yes. All costs, as we discussed, three important elements. These three elements can be divided in two parts that is direct versus indirect. This division is very important. Direct costs are those costs which can be conveniently and easily related to a particular product, process or service. For example, in a factory there are you know 5 to 10 products are produced. We purchase some raw material for a particular product. In that case, that raw material is exclusively meant for that particular product. So, we can say that raw material is the cost of that X product. Suppose for a publication of a newspaper, the cost of the paper and yeah. the cost of the ink yeah. will be considered as the direct cost. Direct cost. Fine. Because you can directly relate that particular cost which you can see that in a newspaper, you see the paper is there, you see the ink is there. So, that is directly, it is used Fine. in the Fine. particular product. But when it is difficult to relate a particular cost to a particular product or that cost is to be divided among few products that is known as indirect cost. For example, there are 5 workshops, 5 products are produced in a company and there is a water cooler, there is a canteen which is used by the old departments. In that case, it is very difficult to say that the how many workers from X department are you know taking the advantages or you know benefits from canteen or you know water cooler. So, the cost of such you know facilities which is difficult to allocate to a particular department product or process are known as indirect cost. So, this division of direct and indirect is very important in the sense it will help you to calculate the cost of various products. Okay. Can you further elaborate this elements of cost which we have just talking about as a direct and indirect? As we have already discussed, there are three components of cost that is material, labor and expenses. And again these three components can be classified as direct and indirect. So, we can say there are six major components of cost that is direct material, indirect material direct labor, indirect labor, direct expenses, indirect expenses. Exactly what do we mean by the term overheads? Overheads are basically indirect costs. Overheads are some total of indirect material, indirect labor and in indirect expenses. All indirect costs are clubbed together known as overhead and all direct costs that is direct material, direct expenses and direct labor. They are clubbed together and it is known as prime cost. So, basically the cost can be divided in two parts that is prime cost and overheads. Okay. So, prime cost is the you know the main cost, the basic cost involved in production of a product. Once Over you are able to have this kind of indirect cost and you have told the direct labor, material and expenses if we club makes up a prime cost. Now, how can we classify these overheads into yeah. various categories? Overheads can be classified basically in three parts. It is based on the functions. Overheads which occurs in factory premises, we call it as factory overhead or production overhead. The overheads which occurs in office and administration, we call it office and administrative overhead and there are some overheads which occurs during selling and distribution of the product. We call them selling and distribution overheads. So, based on functions we can divide overheads in three parts production, office and administrative overhead and selling and distribution overhead. This classification is very important from the point of view we can calculate cost of product at different levels. So, this is very very important question which you have asked. As you have rightly quoted, one is related to the production, 
up yeah. to some extent we can finalize okay production would be done by us but distribution would be done by someone else yeah or it may be possible that we take the goods from outsource outside we are not going to produce them and distribution will be done at our level so keeping in view the cost at various levels all these kind of decisions can be taken by the yeah. businessman yeah once you are able to classify the overheads now the question is related to the classification of cost yeah. i think there are various categories on the basis of which we can classify the cost so can you explain our learners what are all those categories under which the cost could be classified yeah costs are you know classified on different basis first of all we divide cost according to variability fixed cost variable cost and semi variable cost fixed cost are those costs which are not related to the amount of production the quantity of production which remain fix even if you produce one item even if you produce 1000 items or even if you don't produce fix cost remain fix these cost doesn't change with the change in production so the cost which is there at the zero production yeah. is known as to be the fix yeah. cost fix cost matlab without producing any goods that cost we have to bear yeah. and if we are going to produce the goods then also we have to bear the same yeah. kind of cost then that is known as to be the yeah. fix cost can you explain it with some example yeah for example you have taken some rented accommodation for you know running a restaurant on a particular day you don't find any customer okay so you have to pay rent for the day okay so even if on one particular day there are you know hundreds and thousands of customers you pay the rent same same rent is going to be so paid. the amount of rent remains same irrespective of the client ji second is variable costs variable costs are those costs which are directly proportional to output or production for example if you produce 1 kg of you know material uh, output you need some material if you produce 2 kg definitely you need mat more material if you keep on you know increasing or decreasing the output your demand for raw material increase or decrease in the same way so we can say the cost which are directly related to output or production are known as variable cost then there are some semi variable cost as the term says semi variable these are fixed to some extent and later on they becomes variable can you quote uh, hack explain with the help of an example what exactly do we mean by the term semi variable cost you can say that uh, there are some you know cases where the cost remains same up to certain time suppose you are producing 10 kg material you need x quantity of raw material even if you produce 11 kg you need the same quantity but after a certain level say 15 kg say 20 kg you know the you know the requirement of raw material increases so these are known as okay. same variable it could be in case of the telephone where the telephone company says that minimum rental for a month is paid to be this much in which certain calls are free so if yeah. we use up to that extent then it is fixed if yeah. we are going to use the telephone more than that particular extent of call yeah. that has been allotted by the company yeah. then we have to pay according to the call charges yeah. so it is going to be a semi variable cost yeah. where up to some extent it remain fixed and if we keep on producing increasing the product yeah. then in that case the cost is going to be yeah. change can you further classify these element of cost into different more categories we have already classified on the basis of element that uh, what element we have we can see basically there are three elements material labor and overheads or you can call them expenses so basically that we have already discussed but you will find that in different products the ratio the proportion of material labor and expenses varies for example if you see there is some product for example some you know artistic product is there some painting is there in that case you may find material cost is not much you know and a canvas and some colors and so so that cost is not more but in that case the cost of painter the labor charges may be more there may be you know some you know 
artistic you know handmade items. So, it, 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 it happens. There are some cases uh, for example, some services. So, in that case expenses are more neither material is important nor you know labor is important expenses are important. So, you know depending upon situation uh, the, the proportion of different uh, elements varies. We can divide costs on some other basis also for example, identifiability of cost with a particular cost unit. In some cases we can directly and very clearly very conveniently we can say that this particular cost is related to this product In that case we call it as direct cost and if it is not possible to directly you know allocate a cost to a particular unit that is indirect cost. Okay. Can you further explain it with the help of an example directly and indirectly which you are talking of? Yeah, as I discussed suppose a company is producing 5 products. In that case we need to calculate cost of each product individually separately. Suppose we produce x product and for that particular x product we need to buy a particular raw material. If we need to buy that particular raw material exclusively for x product in that case that is meant for x product only that is its direct cost which becomes part of finished product. But in some cases you will see that there are some expenses for example, there is a meeting room there is a committee room where some expenses are incurred. So, that is not specifically for that product that committee room or meeting you know syndicate room is used for all the departments. So, the cost of that you know syndicate room is you know allocated to all the departments. So, that has to be divided among all the departments. So, such costs are known as indirect costs. Okay. Then you can divide costs on the basis of controllability. There are some costs which you can control. You can control by you know adopting more scientific methods. You can control cost by reducing you know wastage. With more precision you can reduce the cost. Sometime cost you can control the cost, but sometime cost is not under your you know purview. For example, if the market price or taxes on, on a particular product has increased, so you cannot help. So, these are uncontrollable costs. Okay. So, these are the various classifications under which the cost has to be classified. Yeah. Do we have some more basis on the which we can classify these costs? Yeah, or there what are relevant decisions can we make with the help of all these kind of things? Yeah, although there are lot many you know bases on which you can divide cost, but there are some important costs which I would like to discuss such as opportunity cost. If you avail one opportunity definitely you have to forego another opportunity. So, the cost of you know the activity which you have foregone is basically opportunity cost. For example, if you go to you know a movie and you leave the opportunity to join a dinner in that case the cost of opportunity cost of that movie is the dinner which you have missed at a particular place. So, it means in order to you know acquire something you have to sacrifice something. So, that uh, particular opportunity which you have foregone is basically opportunity cost. So, opportunity cost you should consider while calculating cost you will understand that uh, at least you should earn more than that opportunity which you have foregone. Then we can have sunk costs, the cost which you have already incurred and you know which may not be uh, very relevant in you know decision scenario because that cost have already incurred and you cannot do anything we call that as sunk cost. Then differential cost, this is very very important. Whenever you take decision, you need to understand by taking this decision how much you know difference it is going to have on the cost. By taking this decision, cost is increasing by 10 percent by x amount. So, that x amount is basically differential cost. So, definitely you can take decision 
if the revenue is more than the differential cost, we, we can go for that cost. So, differential cost is very important in taking decision in competitive scenario. Cost is also you know differentiated on the basis of normal versus abnormal. We can see the cost which occurs in normal circumstances we call as normal cost. And there are sometimes there are some you know abnormalities in life. So, all cost over and above normal cost we call as abnormal cost. You mean to say if some accident used to occur in a factory and yeah. some fire occurs or some breakdown yeah. took place in a machine, yeah. then we have to spend a cost on repairing it, getting it renewed. Yeah. Then that cost is come under the category of the abnormal cost. Yes. While there are certain routine nature expenses which we have to bear every now and then, then they are going to come under a normal yeah. category. So, these are the different ways under which the cost can be classified and a businessman should use all these aspects in his mind at the time of calculating the cost of the products. So, learners, I hope with our today's discussion, we are able to make you clarify exactly what do we mean by the term cost, how can we classify the cost into different categories as direct and indirect and then we have taken the various elements of cost into consideration. I hope all these things are going to be very, very helpful to you in understanding your self-learning material. Side by side, they are also going to help you in implementing these things in your numerical aspects of the question because we have already discussed about the direct and the indirect type of thing that what exactly the prime cost is there and what exactly the overheads are there which are the main things for a particular costing. So, I am thankful to you Dr. Sharma for providing such useful information to our learners and thank you learners with an expectation that you are going to earn a lot and you are able to have an appropriate calculation of the cost for various type of things in your life. Thank you very much. Thank you sir. प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के